there is a sparse amount of information available regarding this line. No separate minute books were ever kept. Only the railway book of reference from 1846 survives, cataloguing landowners. The London and Birmingham line officially opened fully on the 17th of September 1838, calling up rugby. In 1840, the Midland counties reached rugby and, in 1844, merged a number of local lines to form the Midland, but continued to terminate at rugby. The new Midland Railway, whose Syston to Peterborough Railway, which had gained ascent at the same time as the Rugby and Stamford line, progressed to Peterborough with haste. Unlike the Midland, this line was budgeted strictly and followed the contours of the Welland and Avon rivers. The London and Birmingham Railway had looked at a way of reaching East Anglia from their line and applied for an act to cross the relatively flat country with access to ironstone mining areas and Peterborough via the Midland Railway. Capital was £600,000, with no challenges from gradients, curves or embankments. However, 16 level crossings were required, and to help keep the cost down, gatekeepers' houses were to be built for no more than £180 in local limestone, as demanded by director Edward Watkin. A tunnel at Moorcott was not considered a challenge. The Act was passed and only a week later the London and Birmingham, Grand Junction and Manchester and Birmingham Railways merged to form the London and Northwestern Railway. As the Rugby and Stamford and the Syston to Peterborough lines had been approved at a very similar time, an agreement meant the Midland would build Luffenham where the LNR would converge onto the route to Peterborough. The LNWR would then build Market Harborough to share with the Midland. The line was completed 29th of March 1850, but a director's train took them to the Market Harbour Fair in April. Then on the 1st of May, Lilbourne, Yelvertoft and Stanford Hall, Welford and Kilworth, Theddingworth and Market Harbour were all opened as single track, with the option to double when the purse would allow. One month later, the line to Luffenham was extended to Rockingham, with an intermediate station opening as Medbourne Bridge and renamed Ashley and Weston when nearby Medbourne Station opened in 1879. There had been some delay in the building of the tunnel at Moorcott, and the section from Rockingham to Luffenham opened a year later, thus completing the whole route by 1851. Following the Moorcott delay, Seaton was available for service as a single platform station in June. All the stations had been designed by architect Sancton Wood, notable for the stations on the Syston and Peterborough and Eastern Counties Railways. Stations had been built on tight budgets, with most platforms at ground level. Six years passed before the Midland reached Market Harbour and during that time the Crimean War had exhausted the country's finances and investors weren't as readily available as before. The Midland had planned for a £5 million extension to Bedford but could only obtain 900000 which resulted in the railway following the natural contours. With many curves and some gradients like the one in 119 near Sharnbrook, that even today challenges heavier trains. With this reduced budget, the LNWR leased buildings and track access to the Midland from 1857, before diverting off to their respective destinations. Changes were made in 1885 to alleviate this arrangement. In 1859, growing ironstone profits for the LNWR allowed a branch to Northampton from Market Harbour. The line left the county and called at Clipston and Oxenden. In 1864, a station at Clifton Mill in Warwickshire opened. After successful petitioning, the long-awaited station at Lubbenham opens in August 1869. As it was demanded by the residents, the LNWR opulence was not extended to this station. It was built by what we now call modular construction. In 1887, Bradshaws listed four trains a day. 
In 1878, the LNWR doubled their track and a year later built an independent route to Peterborough East via Wakerley and Barrowden, Kingscliff and Wandsford for whom the branch was named. The line had been built for traffic from the joint venture and opened November 1879. This joint venture was with the GNR for a business opportunity regarding iron ore and agriculture. The Great Northern and London and North Western Joint Railway was formed with a line from Bottisford Junction to Drayton Junction and Seaton via Milton Mowbray and Medbourne. Unfazed by this loss of traffic, the Midland opened a new section of line creating a secondary route to Kettering via Oakham and Corby, passing over the Welland Viaduct and the branch to Wandsford. It is likely the 30 million brick Welland Viaduct was already in place before the Wandsford branch was complete. In 1882, Leicester connected to the joint line via Marefield Junction, which was now three-way. The following year, another spur from Hallerton to Wellham Junction was added. Congestion started to build up around Market Harbour. Double track and traffic from Northampton, the joint line and the Wandsford branch all contributed to the need to upgrade the station. In 1885, the station was moved half a mile south onto the Rockingham Road with four platforms and a low and high level to allow the Midland to pass over the LNWR north of the station. Rugby was becoming congested too, so a viaduct was constructed at Clifton Mill to cross the main line into a new platform on the south side. The old Market Harbour closed on the 27th of June. A three and a half mile branch was built from Seaton in 1894, which doubled back under the Midland behind Manton Tunnel to Uppingham. The branch remained single track and operated as a shuttle service. In 1898, Moorcott Station opened, and in 1899, the Great Central Railway opened, crossing over the line at Rugby. In 1907, following under-usage and the preference to take the Wandsford branch, the Seaton to Luffermham section was singled. Moorcott Station lost the platform, and all was removed from it. The line became part of the London, Midland and Scottish in the 1923 grouping and subsequently, after nationalisation, part of the London, Midland region of British Railways in 1948. When Ashley and Western closed in 1951, staff stayed on for a further year to help clear the backlog of the extensive coal sidings. Clifton Mill closed in 1953. The line from the station into Rugby still exists and is known as the Peterborough Branch siding. In 1960, Uppingham and its branch line close, as does Clipston and Oxenden. However, the Northampton branch continues with a sporadic history beyond the loss of passenger service in 1960. No services called at Market Harbour. Leicester to Rugby closed January 1962, prior to Beeching's reshaping announcements. Despite British Rail announcing closure in 1954, the joint lines fall out of use and finally close in 1964. Following the Beeching report, many services ceased to be in 1966, including Ketton and Collie Western, Manton and Luffenham on the Syston to Peterborough line and all the remaining stations closed on the 6th of June. The neighbouring Great Central lost many of its services, finally closing three years later, cutting off rugby from Leicester. On the 25th of March 1975, Market Harbour attained Grade 2 listed status. On the 16th of August 1981, after many attempts to revive a service, the Northampton branch into Market Harbour is closed.
Thanks for watching. Please comment or discuss your memories of these stations. Don't forget to like and subscribe or click here for other videos. I'll be back soon with the Ambergate, Nottingham and Boston and East Junction Railway.